Hey guys, what's up? It's Finch here. Today we're going to be going over a game that's been highly requested on this channel. It's my SPL game against Selwyn for week 4. As of this point, I've uploaded the first 3 weeks of my SPL season, but you have to get to week 4. So, now we're here with that. For those of you who don't know, Selwyn's one of the best players of all time, and absolutely the best Black White OU player of all time. He has an amazing um, Pokemon resume, if you will. And it's a Smogon Tour Finals like 3 times or 4 times. He's made it to Classic Finals, he's won Smogon Classic before, he has made it all the way to OSC Finals and deep in OSC multiple times, I mean you name it, he even made it to Grand Slam Finals, every single individual tour he's made a foreign, he's made a foreign OLT before, I mean, someone plays every tier at a very high level, but Black White is absolutely his best tier, and not really close, um, he's the best Black White player of all time, he had a 9-0 season last year, he started off this season going into this game 2-1, and one. he had a bit of an unfortunate loss to Fakes week 3 to end his streak, um, trying to think what else there is to add about him. I mean, he's been one of the more inventive black-white players. He, he's kind of championed things, like, for example, the bulky sub-thunderous he created. Um, some of his teams have been used a lot, although, honestly, I think they're a little bit inconsistent at times, but sometimes it's kind of weird. In my eyes, some Solon teams are genius, like the really groundbreaking stuff, like the sub-thunderous rain, for example. It's a good example. But then some of them, maybe it gets a little bit forgetful of certain things. Like, I've noticed teams where he just outright ignores Kelio, for example. I'm like, you know... Probably not the best idea, <laughs> um, but he's been using a lot of bulkier sand teams, a lot of Skarmory, um, a lot of fat, and I realized that against me, I feel like I'm one of the few players in the pool camp of really capitalizing on that, and he knows that. He respects me as a player. Even if he doesn't respect me as a person. <laughs> uh, he, he respects me as a player. I know that much. Um, so I thought he'd change it up, and Pasho actually called him using Thunderous Rain, and I was looking at my team like, yeah. That would make some sense, especially if it had Focus Blast. It would make a lot of sense for him to bring that. So, I kind of tried to find a way to prep where I could have ways to not mine spikes on sand, maybe minimize the impact of spikes, but also be good against that type of rain. And I think Psychic Spam was what I settled on, but I knew there were some Pokemon I really wanted to be good against. The first one was Gliscor. He used a lot of Gliscor, Sword Dance, Ice Fang, Gliscor, and Particular in 1v2. I've using my own Gliscor to kind of check Gliscors at points in times, and that works with the right set and the right time and the right spread, but against him, it would be a lot less effective because he does the same, so I want to be good against that. Another thing is I wanted to find surprise openings with momentum. I really wanted to open the game up and get Pokemon that are threatening in against his Pokemon that are less threatening, if you will, so that was something I really wanted to focus on. So surprise U-turn and Volt Switch users would be my friend, or slow ones anyway. Um, what else was it? Oh, right, 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 right. I also wanted to take advantage of his lack of speed control. Solwyn has a weird habit of using teams as like fastest Pokemon regular, Latios, or even slower than that. Like fast Pokemon Guard Chomp I've seen once from him even. And um, he, he really like the main Scarf for uses is Scarf Tyranitar on Sand Teams. He doesn't use much Scarf Landorus, doesn't use any Scarf Guard Chomp. Very little Scarf Latios recently. He used to use it a lot more on Sand Balances, but nowadays he's faced it out a little bit more. Um, I feel like his teams are more slow and geared towards checking things defensively, which is fine and it can function in black white, but I feel it's quite exploitable. So I actually was initially trying to use things like Thrakion and non choice Keldeo to try and exploit that, but they didn't really fit under the teams I wanted to use. And also, I feel like Thrakion, the main reason to use it right now is a, a Volcarona check on Sand teams. And I didn't really feel a need to, um, to check Volcarona because there's no way he was going to use Volcarona. Yeah, that, let's get to the Pokemon I, I knew he was going to use. I didn't think he'd ever use Volcarona. Um, last year, he used Mammoth against me. And I didn't think he'd bring Mammoth Swine or an Ice Step like Kiram again. Um, I felt like he'd think I'd prepare for that because I kind of got owned by Mammoth last year. So I actually was okay being a little loose against those Pokemon. That was a risk I was willing to take, even if it was a bit of a risky risk, if you will. Um, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. I just um, woke up and got out of bed and recording this now. So a little bit rusty, but I'm sure you guys can tolerate it. Um, oh, yeah. Before I forget, these aren't the spreads they use in an actual battle. Um, again, this is a public import, so I didn't want to reveal my specific speed creep, specific EVs and whatnot, so I slapped on some standard spreads. I kept the Gliscor spread, but I didn't let my IV, uh, my AVs revealed, because this is a set that this game kind of innovated the U-turn Gliscor. This is the first time it really showed up, and then it spread a lot afterwards, so I didn't want to deprive you guys of the spread, but I don't want to tell you guys how many EVs I, I, IVs I undercreep in speed, so yeah, um, and this is a custom Reuniclo spread, I'll keep it. Because it doesn't really matter how much I creep, because you can't really touch other Uniqlo sounds, so like, it doesn't matter. But yeah, um, anyway, so, given that I wanted to capitalize on his lack of speed control, 
I actually wanted to use Latios plus Alakazam, um, particularly with the setup that could lure Tyranitar and make it so that it can't actually check both of them no matter what. Even if I were to, like, say, miss a Focus plus with Alakazam, it wouldn't even come to that because if you get, say, two Surfs plus a couple rounds of Spikes or Stealth Rock on it, then forget about it. So, Call by Latios was the first pick on this team. It did well in prior weeks, and I really liked it here, so why not? Um, and the interesting thing here was that I wanted to pressure Ferrothorn, and I also thought that if he used Thunder Train, it might be with Scizor. So, Hidden Power Fire felt like a beautiful pick on this Latios here. Um, it hadn't been used on Latios in a long, long time, especially for me. And someone might recall the old days when I used this Bam Surf plus Fire Life Orb Latios. So, kind of goes hand in hand with that, but. I've only been using Specs Audios for years now, so there's no way he's going to anticipate it, but it's just kind of a throwback. Funny how we kind of find ourselves in the same dynamic as we did many years back. Because I've been playing Black White for years, so I'm playing Black White for years. So this is kind of like a throwback battle. Yeah, uh, one sec, I just gotta pause. Hey, sorry about that. We good? Okay, we're good. So yeah, I just have to get some water. But anyway, so yeah, the main idea of this team was the Hidden Power Fire, Culverberry Latios. I felt that it was always going to be paired with another Psychic type, ideally a fast one. Now, there were some different ideas here. The one idea that I was trying to make work but didn't really ever work was dual Lottie with Latias there. Maybe like a Specs Latias as a lure or a sub combined Latias with the right support. Even potentially with things like Toxic Spike Tentacle if you go Rain or Fortress with Toxic Spike if you go Sand. You know, there were ideas there. Um, but none of them felt worthwhile. They all felt pretty risky to me. So I kind of passed on basically all of those ideas. Um, the main one that worked was the standard one, the Alakazam one you're seeing right in front of your eyes now. That should be unsurprising, but how did the team go from there? So, let me explain this premise first. So, Surf plus Fire Latios, it hits Offensive Drachi, it hits Ferrothor, and of course it's Scizor. Even Rain does a lot to Scizor. Um, Surf's good for Heatran, Surf's good for Tranitar, Surf Maul's Exedrill, in Power Fire, even can Exedrill in the Sun. Um, if you ever face the Sun team, although I knew someone was never going to Sun me because well, that would be a really bad choice on his end. I do very well against Sun in almost every game. But, um, point being that I would be pretty well off, I think. Um, Skarmory was a Pokemon I also wanted to hit in Power Fire with because you get two after Stealth Rock if it leftovers were knocked off from Pharaoh. It's helpful. Yeah, um, I think that's all that comes for the coverage, but coverage is more than enough. And that opens up the door for Alakazam. All those Pokemon you want damage on for Alakazam or killed for Alakazam. And that coupled with Spikes, which I knew the team was going to have, I just wasn't sure which one, goes a long way. I wanted to run Encore Alakazam here, predominantly because, again, his teams are pretty slow. Things like Nasty Plot Celebi, things like Calm Mind Reuniclus, things like maybe, I don't know, Calm Mind Latias, which I think he might have used in a prior week, although it might have been a utility set. I can't remember which Latias that he used. Swords Dance Glyph Scores, and other ones. You can't kill it with one hit bar ice. Um, and what's really cool about Encore is bulky Pokemon like Combine Latias, Swords Dance, um, Swords Dance Facade Bloom, and Combine Jirachi, and so on and so forth. Combine Latios even, like the setup in the face of things like Blissfor. And you could use that, and you turn out, and then Alexander can Encore them. Same goes for your Nicholas, by the way. You bait an Encore, bait a recover. Encore with the. Uh, Alex Zang goes a long way. See, I was with slow U turn Glow Scar. I felt Encore was a great addition, but I, I basically knew I wanted to use Psychic Focus Eyes at the start, and the fourth move just kind of picked itself. I wouldn't run Thunder Wave if I thought Rio Nicholas was a chance of facing that, but or, or even Psych Up, but it was never, ever happening. Um, Couple with the fact that if he kills me with Bug Buzz, I could Encore into Bug Buzz, and I could check it with Gliscor or Fire Blast, I could trap it with Tar, Hidden Power Ice for whatever reason, I could. Basically check with anything else besides Ladio. So yeah, um, it gave me outs, even if there were temporary outs, and the team's pretty offensive to where I could kind of corner, trap anything later, uh, later on in the game and make sure I can't win, so felt pretty good about that. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, just a little under weather, but anyway. So I knew that these two were my starting point, and with Alakazam plus Ladios at this point, it was pretty clear that I was going to go in a sand direction. Um, these two both appreciate sand damage being dealt on their opponents. They both appreciate opposing psychic type being trapped. And on top of that, changing weather from rain can go a long way, especially with hidden power fire on Latios, in that it doesn't make it have damage wise with rain up. So I felt pretty confident about that. Um, trying to think what else there is of note. Honestly, Tyranitar just fits the composition really well. Again, checking psychic types doing well against Thunderous, Tornadus. Um, 
yeah, on this one in particular, I also ran Thunder Wave. Thunder Wave was really clutch on this team in particular, in my opinion, as it slowed things down for Latios, for Nicholas, because this team, again, they're already naturally slow, but slowing them down even more. Especially when I don't think he's going to want to switch things like Extrill into my Tyranitar, because he knows they're an Earthquake a lot. I kind of figured maybe I'd see like a Jirachi, or a Politoed, or a, um, an on ground coming. Just I've, I've ran Ice Beam Tar, I've ran Earthquake Tar, so switching ground types in against me isn't super safe. Um, so again, Bulky Water Politoed, Rotom Wash, um, I don't know, I'm blanking, Jirachi, again, like other, his own Tyranitar even, um, Balloon before status potentially. Yeah, I mean, if you were to bring a Gastrodon, it would be a bit of a moot point, but it's Skarmory, even. Again, things I think that Paralysis against with this Fury and Nicholas, which I'll get to in a second, was really handy. So that was kind of the rationale behind that set. I didn't mind being walled by Skarmory, either, because if you look at my team, I have four Pokemon Mew to Spikes, which is a huge, 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 huge intended piece of the design of this team. Gliscor was the next pick, and again, it gives me Stealth Rock. It's spike immune and it can protect off the enemy damage from stealth rock. So it's basically I mean, hazard immune. So now I basically have three Pokemon that are hazard immune between Alakazam, Maria, Nicholas, and Gliscar, which is a huge advantage, a huge song point against Solomon, who, in my opinion, was like 80 90% of the time using spikes. Um, his Skarmor usage is above average. His Ferrothorn usage is slightly below average, but when you combine it with that Skarmor usage, it, it couples to like 75 80%. So it is kind of an inevitability. So being good against hazards was a huge plus for this team for me. And the only Pokemon that aren't weak to hazards, they all have distinct purposes that don't really mind that. Tyranitar is only coming in once or twice to trap something generally, and maybe to set weather. Okay, fine, no big deal. This team can play with rain up even. So again, no big deal at all. Ferrothorn, it, it really, it's there to sp spike itself, so that's great too. Um, but yeah, let's get back to Gliscor here. So Gliscor's purpose on this team was to set Stealth Rock. Um, the big thing was against his own Gliscor. Let's say he runs Taunt Gliscor or Rocks Gliscor of his own or Sword Jade's Facade Gliscor, all of which I thought were sem semi-common, pretty common against me in this matchup from him. Um, I could U-turn against them. And that U-turn means that I, um, I take damage from their attack. But I don't risk doubling in a Tyranitar, my Latios or Alakazam. I don't risk them taking damage. So I sponge the damage and I still get the offensive poke points, the best of both worlds. You don't take any risk in losing the psychic types to Pursuit or to a super effective move from Gliscor or whatever it may be, Facade. But you also get them in safely. And that's humongous in this game and in general. So loving that little piece of pressure there. Um, what else? Oh yeah, this is also really good because you bait in things like Skarmory, like Ferrothorn frequently, and being able to hammer them with pressure from the offensive Rhea Nicholas, which we'll get to in a minute, um, was a big plus as well. Now you could also function with uh, Jellicent there, and actually use a variant of this team with Jellicent versus Jimmy Chartwig, which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, a, well, a little few videos, I guess, down the line, but that was great. Um, EVs are big here, pretty weak to extra drill, as you can see from this team, so I pimped out that physical defense to make sure I was always good against drill, and even Tracheon. Um, even tank things like Choice Bandit and Black with ease, so that's chill. E e e the EV is in special defense, and I still live Road and Watch Hydro Pump, which is cool, especially if you want to undercreep that with speed. You can do that, it's optional. I'm not going to say what I did with my IVs because I don't want to reveal the information because everyone's just going to undercreep me by one, so yeah. What else? Um, 16 attack. I think if I recall correctly, this was like a U turn plus Sand plus Pursuit sort of deal with the, the, um, the damage ranges and making sure I always get a kill. I don't remember off the top of my head. It also helps with things like Nasty Blop Celebi though, making sure you put it in Draco Meteor range. So yeah, I, there's a couple reasons there. I did a lot of thinking. This, this game I probably put in six to seven hours into really thinking through prior to it. So yeah, this is false. This is like the best of the best, like for real. Like I put it in the title of every video to get clicks, but this game is like the best of the best. Like I view myself as the second best black white player and Solon is the undisputed top black white player. So yeah, I mean, big deal. Anyway, um. After this list score, I knew I wanted to use the Arena Nicholas here. I've liked the idea of three attack Arena Nicholas for a while. Initially, I liked Signal Beam or Shadow Ball in the fourth slot over Hidden Power Ice. But the main thing that changed it up here was the fact that, um, <clears throat> the fact that, sorry, the fact that he uses so much Gliss score and so little, um, things like Trick Room, Arena Nicholas, and Celebi with Nasty Plot that threatened my team. Like with the setup, like I, I felt I had outs against all the things that I would have needed the coverage for, besides maybe like Acid Armor or Nicholas of his own. But I didn't think I was ever gonna face that, and I also have Ankara Alex Even then, yeah. Um, 
Uh, there were some corners I was willing to cut that I basically said, okay, I'm going to cut in return for having extra coverage against what I expected. And I really, really, really expected a Gliscor or even a Landorus T. So yeah, it um, turns out I used neither of them. Spoiler alert, but hey, that actually was fine anyway. EV spread does a million things. Um, first and foremost, it's able to comfortably check things like Scald and Rain from Python and Tentacruel and Rotom W Hydro Pump and Sand. Make sure I can soak up their attacks. And also just being a nice status soaker against Rain is humongous, super underrated. Um, also just destroys Rain. EVs, um, <clears throat> I think I always live, I don't know if it's Specs Latios or Dragon Gem Latios or what. There's some special attack I live that I don't remember. It might, it might be Specs Caldeo. Yeah, I think it's Specs Caldeo. Um, physical defense, it helps against things like Scarf, Garchomp, and also just living earthquakes that aren't like boosted. That's important. Um, I think that at Jolly Mammoth Swine was another thing I factored in here. So I was pretty weak to Mammoth Swine, yeah. Um, also wanted to make sure I lived like Sucker Punch from non-life Gorb, Toxic Croaks, that sort of stuff, fringe stuff like that, I factored in. Special attack, I didn't really need more than this. This is sure the one shot on the plus speed um, special defense invested Gliscor spread that I was expecting. So I didn't think he'd use max special defense against me because I used a lot of Gliscor of my own and I'd probably try and outspeed him. So yeah, um, the EV spread did a number of things though. I think a big one also on top of that was hitting that 404 because if I face like a Chansey team, be it Rainstall or Sunstall, being able to soak up um, more seismic tosses, maybe take a Toxic and just sit there all day, it actually really, really puts in a ton of work. It wastes so many soft boils with, um, with Sand Up in, in particular, and it finds openings for Gliscor to get in, Lure and Zat to, you turn around, and that basically becomes an unlosable matchup with these sets, so yeah. Psychic with all this damage loss, by the way, always took you physical physically defensive Politoed. Um, does a number to Rotom Wash after Stealth Rock and Sand. It's just really strong. Focus Blast actually has a chance of one-shotting non non-Chopel Rocks uh, Polytoad, which that's uh, a Fire Entry, which is cool. Although Chopel's the set of choice. It's gonna one-shot Offensive Exedrill. Offensive Tran after two Stealth Rock rounds. It's blue and always dying. Magnezone one-shotted. Yeah, and a big one was Skarmory and the Roost. It does a lot too. Scizor, you're always hook young, even bulky band. Yeah, there are just a lot of things that the spread is. I, I'll be honest, I, I don't have a list in front of me. I didn't bother rereading my prep chat from that week. It had over probably three, 4,000 lines, and I just didn't feel like going through all that, but I summed it up for you there. It was also a great U-turn recipient from Gliscor. Um, let's say you U-turn on an opposing Gliscor, or you U-turn on a Politoed. You get this in, and it just poses a huge threat. They don't know what to expect. They see the damage, and they're like, oh, crap, it's OTR, but it's not really Trick Room. Um, and with Sunday from Trend Track, kind of can be faster in some specific things anyway. It goes, it comes in handy. And also being able to soak up status. Again, another huge trend in my teams. I have Poison Eagle Gliscor to soak status. I have this and Oxen to soak up status. I'm not going to lose to just status and being whirled around by hazards and whatnot, you know. I, I'm not going to bleed out. I want to always have a fighting chance in games. And that was kind of my philosophy going into this SPL. So yeah, that's another big addition there. Around the team is always going to be Skarmory or Ferrothorn. Um, Ferrothorn made a lot more sense here. I wanted another water resist. I really, really liked having a, another electric resist as well. It helped with Rotom Wash, which is actually kind of a pesky bitch here. Um, and also, Jirachi was a huge pain in this team, but Bulldoze Ferrothorn covers like the rains that would paralyze or knock your Ferrothorn or whatever, and then you just Bulldoze spam against sub. It's really cool in those matchups. I really like that. It also is great for Heatran, which special defense Heatran can be a pain. Someone does have a track record using that. So I went with Bulldoze here. Um, rest is pretty standard. Honestly, I had a variant that used Stealth Rock Ferrothorn and like Toxic or Knockoff or Taunt on Gliscor, but I liked it as is, so yeah. Hmm, is there anything else to really talk about? I don't think so. I think I covered every single move slot. Whip was mainly for hitting Tentacle, making sure you are able to retain hazards against that. Um, also good for Rotom Watch, so forcing Tyrant on that. Losing gy no, no, no Gyro Ball on this team did stink, but it was fine. Um, I wasn't expecting Gyro Ball targets. I didn't expect the Tyrant Black. What's up? I didn't expect the Breloom, and even if it did, I have Slow U-Turn and Rear Nicholas and Alexam, so Breloom wasn't a big issue. Um, I really wasn't expecting Sub Dragonite, and I knew I was good, okay against Latias anyway. You turned Gliscor, by the way, against Sub Command Latias with Encore on Alkazam and Tar. Super clutch. You're never losing to that, which is cool, because Psychic Spam actually kind of is a little weak to that, plus spikes, so had to be careful. But yeah, no, I was good there, so.
yeah, I felt really confident going in. Um, if you have any questions about the team, let me know below. I feel like I missed something. I, I get that feeling when like I missed something, but I can't know what it is. I don't remember what it is. So I'm just going to say, hey, if there are any things that I didn't cover, let me know down below. Let me go ahead and get to the game now, though. One second, guys. Hey, are we back? I think we're back now. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So, yeah, someone actually did bring Thunderous Rain. Pasha kind of called it. I wasn't expecting Sizzler, and I thought there was a chance he might bring, a, say, like a double dragon type rain, like with like a Dragonite with Extreme Speed for more offensive teams, and they maybe expect me to go like like that. Um, I figured Scarf Keldeo would make a lot of sense from him, but he actually, I think he went Specs Keldeo plus Scarf Sizzler. Now, I'll be completely honest, I'm a major critic of teams like Solwyn's. Um, it like outright loses to a couple Pokemon. For example, imagine facing Agility Thunderous, which is something I use a lot. It just loses. Imagine facing uh, even any Thunderous, really, that out especially if it outruns his. I mean, Thunder kills Keldeo, Focus Blast. It just sits on Ferrothorn with Sub regardless, but Focus Blast 2 kills that. Thunder kills Tentacruel. Thunder kills Politoed. Thunder after Stealth Rock always kills Scarf Scizor. That leaves his own Thunderous. Only thing he can live for Stealth Rock, and even then, Hidden Power Ice is a main, major problem. You know, you gotta be careful. So, Rain without Celebi, without. Latios without Latios, without Mamoswan, without Yachichamp, I don't think is a very feasible strategy, in my personal opinion, but not only does he use this team, I've seen other like really good black-white players use this team, so maybe I just don't get it. Maybe I don't. Um, it's something that I personally wouldn't use, but Solwind used it, and Solwind is really, really good at black-white, so just hat off, and all the power to you. I felt the matchup was good and bad going into preview. Wow, really a um, way to take a stance there. Oh, gosh. <laughs> So it was bad because like Scizor against three Saki types, yikes, but it was good because Clover Latios and Hidden Power Fire Latios looks so good here, and Rio Nicholas kind of picks, and I don't think he has many ways to break me that aren't, um, aren't going to lead to me getting trades, and I was also pretty damn well prepared for Thunderous too, so I thought if I could keep Scizor to one kill, I was probably going to win this game if I hit my Focus Blasts and my Dracos and whatnot. But if I got multiple and he outplayed me, made like a timely double to Scizor on a Psychic type switch in, I could lose. That's kind of one way to tilt the scales in his favor. Or if, like, say, Thunderous T gets a para on the Latios or cheeses through the Drantar, that would be a major problem, too. Um, right off the bat, I thought it was either Ban Scizor plus Scarf Keldeo or Scarf Scizor plus Specs Keldeo. I kind of thought Scarf Keldeo makes a lot of sense to bring against me because there's no way I was going to bring Celebi again for the second week in a row. But hey, you know, teach your own. Um, Specs Keldeo is still a freaking killer, and I very rarely use Jellicent, so it would have been a good bring, and it turned out to be a good bring on his end. Um, but again, Scizor, he kind of needed speed control if it wasn't Scarf Keldeo, so yeah. I figured that the Thunderous is probably just sub-3 attacks. It makes the most sense. He really wants to fight in coverage here. It could be sub-Nasty Plot, but then look how weak he is to Ferrothorn. Like, if Keldeo isn't locking into the right move, then he actually kind of just lets up spikes like, multiple times over if he doesn't get a burn early. And I don't like that personally in my um, my reigns, but maybe he feels differently. I don't know. I used to seem to kind of enabled Ferrothorn against Laden when I used Sub Protect Thunderous on week 8, spoiler alert. But we'll get to that when we get to that. I have my own reasoning. Maybe he has his own reasoning too. You know, it's kind of cool because in Black White, you could be so adaptable with your movesets and your strategies, even on rain teams that have the same 4, 5, 6 Pokemon, in that anything could be justified. So I'm not really here to question the team much more. I'm just gonna say, looking at my matchup, I, I thought I could do really well with Latios. In fact, I led with Latios. Um, I didn't think it ever leads Sizzler. If he's leading Sizzler in the Gluscore, means I get rocks for free. Coupled with the fact that if it leads in the Ferrothorn, you know, I mean, I, I live banded Superpower usually. Coupled with the fact that I don't think it's banned Max Adamant either. And if I get a knockoff on that pursuit, gets much weaker. It gets kind of dicey for him. So yeah. Um, hmm. I think that's all I got. If I'm missing anything, let me know. But yeah, no, um, let's get into it. I lead Latios again, so I don't think he's going to lead Scarf Scizor. And I figure, okay, he's likely leads our Politoed and Ferrothorn, basically. So I want to get ahead of the curve here. And sure enough, not only do I do that, but I crit Hidden Power Fire turn one. Huge crit. Why is this a huge crit? First and foremost, it means that he thinks I'm Specs if I killed him. And it doesn't reveal my set. Second off, no hazards for him. Third off, no Ferrothorn for him. That is huge for me. And that mattered a lot humongous um, RNG favor there. Pretty lucky this season so far. I couldn't be more appreciative of the RNG for favoring me there. Big turn. Definitely really unfortunate for Solowin. Put him in a corner. Rocks aren't doing a ton against my team as I outlined before. He only hits three Pokemon and the score kind of negates it. So yeah, but the fact that he doesn't have Ferrothorn alive and pivot around things, it, it definitely gets awkward. 
Also a little bit of 50-50 turn 2, because Draco wouldn't kill Ferrothorn after Hidden Power Fire. So if I Draco on the Polytoad of Tentacle, great. If I Hidden Power Fire into the Ferrothorn, great. But if I get it wrong, then awkward. So yeah, who knows? He could have been Thunder Wave. He could have been Gyro Ball there too. So definitely unfortunate for Solomon. Limited him a ton. He goes Scissor. I'm like, okay. So this reveals his whole team to me, him going Scissor here. He is Scarf on the uh, Scissor. He's Spex on the Keldeo. There's no way that's not the case. Um... I feel like he's just going to go for Scarf U-turn here, um, trying to get the rain in. I don't think he's going to Pursuit me because Pursuit wouldn't kill Culber, and I don't even know if it, I don't even know if it always kills a regular Latios, honestly, from full without Stealth Rock or Sand or anything, so I was definitely switching here. I go Gliscor. Again, I'm fine with him going Polytoad. He creates U-turn that confirms he's um, of the Specs Scarf variety. He brings in Keldeo. I'm like, okay, so it's definitely going to be Specs Keldeo. He goes for Surf there. If that's 23, I'm like, yeah, that's fine with me. He predicted me to protect, so I got ahead of him. He brings, he goes Hard Tentacle. Now this, I don't understand from him at all. Hard Tentacle on Ferrothorn outside of, uh, outside of Rain. That's like a new black, white, but like not to insult, but like, if you predict me to click Whip, then you go to Scizor or Thunderous. If you predict me to click Hazard, you go Polytoad and Encore, or you go Thunderous and sub up. Like, Tentacruel never makes sense. So I'm like trying to think, like, what the hell? Is this, like, knockoff Tentacruel? Or is he just dis desperate already? I'm not sure, but I go Spikes, he goes Tentacruel. So I'm like, okay. A little bit weird there, but fine with me. I go Arena Glyphs, I don't want to risk a burn. I respect it. And now I don't get, I, I, he doesn't get to spin off this huge for me. So he spins here. I go Psychic, and that takes him out from full. And I'm up, like, two. And, like, he gave me Tentacruel. I'm like, what the hell is happening right now? This is an amazing start. Um, I feel great. So yeah, he, um, he goes Scizor. I actually always live a U-turn from this range. So I just want to go for a, as much damage off as I can. I think I go for Psychic Predicting Switch. Yeah, and I get a nice 54% off Pato. That's worthwhile for me. Um, so yeah, that worked out really well for me. Um, I also want to live two Pursuits, by the way. So if he Pursuits as I stay, then I can just recover off. So Psychic was worth it. Never worth risking Focus Blast there. But yeah, I bring Tram Turn here now, which is good for me. And, um... He doubles to Keldeo. He switched to Keldeo rather as a Thunder Wave. And now that's slow. I'm like, great. This is great. Now here, I have two Pokemon that I'd use very useless in this match for this point. The Gliscor and the Ferrothorn. Keeping one of them would be good just to have a switch into Scizor attacks. But ultimately, I don't think I need either. Um, he's not showing Focus Blast on Thunder's T if he went to hard Tentacle there. So that kind of made me want to keep Ferrothorn. But like, if he's Nasty Plot or Agility Sub, then he should be able to win the 1v1 regardless because I can't break the sub. And honestly, coupled with the fact that if he clicks Sacred Sword into Gliscor, then he kind of just loses, so I also get Rocks up. I, I thought he'd click Surf, but also, even if he clicks Sacred Sword into Ferrothorn, I, I just I get the Rocks right there after, or I can go Ladius right after and pick another kill, so I, I felt really good just going Ferrothorn. It didn't really make a big deal. Coupled with the fact that Sacred Sword could have been a roll, but nah, it wasn't. I actually talked right after. I should have talked before, but it didn't matter, because Ferrothorn felt like my fodder regardless. Now, after the game, I'm dragging PM me thinking that was a choke. I don't agree. I think it was a 50-50 in which I picked the Pokemon I needed the least, and it went that way. Now, if he had a specific Thunderous set, it could have been um, it could have been Gliscor being more useless, but it didn't really matter to me. Now, here I think I make a misplay afterwards, though. What I should do is I should go Gliscor and click Rocks. I don't do that. I go hard Latios, and I, I, I that was a bad play. That was not my best play. I'll be the first to admit that. I go hard Latios, I click Draco. 8 of 49, like, yeah, so the roll, um, minimum damage is, like, 49 against Scarf Scissors, unless he's got bulk, then I think I'm pretty fine, um, but, yeah, no, so, I'm okay to switching out here, I'm Culberberry, he doesn't know that, so, yeah, I get the free switch there, and now, again, I should go Gliscor here and click Stealth Rock, I don't know why I didn't click Stealth Rock, I think this is, like, what I regret, basically, he goes Polytoad here, and I, um, I click U-Turn, which, again, not the end of the world, like, I can bring in Latios and try and get another kill, but, it's whatever, I, uh, he protects here as I, Go for the Draco. He's like, okay. I'm surprised he protected there, honestly, because I could have roosted, but I guess he's scared of Scissor. He goes Kelio here as I Draco and I miss. Now, that's like a miss that doesn't really hurt or help me because I could just freaking, um, I want to roost off all of the damage. I want to get a full power out, and I, I know I have a lot of chances too because it's only doing about 60 in rain. 57, 61, yeah. So now the big thing is here if he goes Scissor on a roost and wins the 50 50, U turns to stair, which is switch, then I actually can lose. So after a while, I'm like, you know, he's gonna try and catch on to that and notice that this is his only real chance to win the game and go scissor on a roost maybe and try and win the 50-50, but Draco 
did 49 in change last time, but I'm 0 0 Scizor, which is the standard. Um, Scarf will technically dice runs 8 HP, which has been pretty standard to under speed other Scarf Scizor. I get slow U turn because you still run Alakazam with all that. You don't really need speed for anything else than that. Regardless, it's doing like 53, 54 on average, and 51 is easily above min damage. So. I, um, I roost one more time, and I think I Draco on the next turn, saying, okay, fine, the damage on Keldia is enough, um, and if he goes Scizor, I catch him, and I caught him, and I crit, and how people use, M-Dragon in particular, use the SS calculator and complain because that crit would have mattered if it was SS calc, because Draco is less base power, but in black and white, um, and M-Dragon admitted this and PM'd me after the game, uh, that didn't matter, unless they had a very, very, very bulky Scarf Scizor, but let me tell you why that's not possible. A, the U-turn damage reveals that a lot of attack. B, um, even if he's not max attack, enough that he'd invest, it would have to be in special defense, not in HP, which I don't know if he would do regardless, but wouldn't chip the scales a ton, and the 49 still would have been closer to min damage, so the odds of two of him killing would be fine. And C, on top of all of that, you need max speed on Scarf Scizor, otherwise you're slower than Alakazam. And if you go any slower than that, you could be slower than Starmie, or slower than Tornadus or Latios. You, you, uh, it has to be max speed plus, without a doubt. So. Someone complained at the time, I dragon complained at the time, but like afterwards I basically kind of got the shark saying, yeah, we miscalculated SS, RB, so I'm assuming it didn't really matter. I feel bad for Solwyn. The turn one crit didn't definitely matter, but at this point I, I felt the game was kind of locked up. Um, you could go ahead and make the decision as you wish yourself. I definitely feel bad for turn one for Solwyn, but not, not for this. Um, but yeah, no, I, I got that there. And then Solwyn said it was a joke and whatever. Um, I feel bad, the game didn't go as why. I go Tar here, it's no point um, keeping Latios in. He goes Grass Knot, good play on his end for sure. Um, nice prediction. So maybe it was like four attacks, I don't know. I Pursuit there, no point um, doing anything else. He's not sub with Grass Knot, so I just want to force damage on it, put it in Alakazam range, and that does that. So yeah, now he goes Polytoad, it's fine with me. Um, I go Gliscor here knowing I could live a, yeah, I live a Scald here and I could get Rocks up, which is cool with me. Really all I needed to do at this point, I think actually Earthquake might be the play too. He protects here as I, um, I rock it. He protects on the rock, which I didn't understand at all. I think he just always skulls, but maybe he's just trying to like live Alakazam after Earthquake, but he would do that regardless. Um, Alakazam's not doing 50 or 45, so yeah. But anyway, now I just go Tari here, just want to force some damage on this. Um, I pursued again, and yeah, yeah, Alakazam wins, the game's over. He goes, Keldeo, fine with me. And he said, yes, that's the only way you ever beat me. Um, I, I was like genuinely sorry for turn one, but like, that's just a really... Um, group thing to say, and like, I beat him clean in World Cup, and he's been lucky against me before. Um, Solund is undoubtedly the better player than I am, and he's more proven than me, and honestly, he's more proven than just about anyone besides maybe ABR in terms of competitive Pokemon. And honestly, he's probably passing ABR this year, so yeah. Solund is an all time great, and I have the utmost respect for him as a player. But I, I think his um, perception of this game was a little bit off. I think I, for once, just this once, was preparing a little better. And I definitely played the part too. I think the only turn you can really debate about is not going to and clicking Stealth Rock if I was going to fight a Ferrothorn, in which I say, yeah, fair, but I also feel like I get the better end of him with a couple pursuits. Um, that Psychic was really good. The Rear Nicholas got a ton of mileage out of that. And I think him going Tension Cruel was a misplay in his end. So, all in all, I'm happy with how I played. I think Solon brought a cool team, even if I don't really agree with how it went out. Um, and I think Solon brings cool teams every week, and I really love watching him play. I have a ton of respect for him. I don't think he's he has the respect for me, honestly. <laughs> That's fine. Um, it's a funny community we got. And at the end of the day, you know, you got to do what you got to do. You got to feel how you feel. That's fine with me. Uh, but yeah, nothing but respect for Solwind in his game. Definitely got a little fortunate here, but was super happy to take this and move on to 4-0. So yeah, stay tuned for my next games and my posts on Smogging about this. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great weekend, guys. Actually, you'll probably see this during the week. But yeah, have a great week, guys. Okay, bye-bye.